Hey guys, so two thirds of our planet is covered in water, but there isn't nearly as much fresh water. Only 3% of the world's water is fresh, and it isn't distributed evenly at all. Many countries have a fresh water deficit, and that's a serious problem for several of them. A problem that's solved in different ways. The most ambitious project was attempted by Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. His impressive creation is known as the Great Man-Made River. And today, you get to learn all about it. Be sure to watch to the end and leave your comments and ideas below. So, 90% of Libya is covered by desert and there's little to no rainfall. Additionally, the high air temperature makes water evaporate very quickly. Some regions don't have any rain for 5 to 10 years. Now, in the mid-1900s, the Libyans were searching for oil in the Sahara, but instead found something even more valuable. The Nubian water layer is the largest known underwater source of underground fresh water in the eastern part of the Sahara Desert. It takes up 770,000 square miles, and it is located across the borders of four different northeastern African countries. The water reserves there are incalculable and in the thousands of cubic miles. The first idea of creating a giant irrigation system appeared in the 1960s, but it only began in the early 1980s. Muammar Gaddafi started the massive project. The Libyan dictator aimed to pump water up from underground and distribute it through pipes to the country's northern cities. Now, according to the most optimistic estimations, the discovered water source would last for 4,800 years if up to 360,000 cubic miles were pumped per year. So the project would be completed in five stages. First, a factory making huge 80-ton pipes would be built. The pipes would function as car tunnels. Overall, over half a million 13-foot diameter pipes were built. The main part of the water pipe laid out of them. Additionally, leading foreign company workers arrived in the country to help bring the great man-made river to life. They included Americans, Japanese, and Germans. But the majority of phase one was done by South Korean specialists. Concrete pipes were filled with specially made roads, totaling over 2,000 miles in total length. They were made so that heavy machinery could drive on them without problems. The first step also included building 750 mile long pipes. Huge trenches were dug to lay the pipes, since the water line should be 20 feet deep. In total, about 3 billion cubic feet of rock was displaced. The first phase cost almost $5 billion. Stage 2 began in 1989. It involved laying water lines to Tripoli, the largest city and capital of Libya, to provide it and its surrounding areas with a daily water source of 35 million cubic feet. Stage 3 was connecting a group of oases in Kufra and Benghazi, the country's second largest city, together. The last two stages were to build a branch to Tobruk, and connect it to the combined system near the city CERT. It resulted in a huge pipe, aqueducts, and water containment system. There is a total of over 1,300 shafts, and a significant amount of them are over 1,700 feet deep. Many people made money on the project, and a giant pipeline stretching over 1,800 miles was built. The pipeline started sending water from four main underwater sources in South Libya to the northern cities. Until the civil war in 2011 began, three of the five steps were completed and step four was almost underway. Using the great man-made river, Libyans could have delivered 230 million cubic feet of fresh water to cities and settlements, providing for 4.5 million people. 70% of the water is needed for agriculture. Thanks to the project, the country now has large farms that grow wheat, barley, vegetables, and citrus fruits. The Great Man-Made River was originally made not just to provide water to the people, but also to lower the need for imports. Additionally, it made it possible to expand green areas in the north and west, helping prevent further desertification. 
the massive construction project did cost Livia a pretty penny. According to various data, the total cost was about $24 billion, and most of it was completed. The project was to finish in 2015. The country was interestingly able to raise the money. They gathered money on tobacco and fuel taxes, as well as oil sales profits. However, we'll probably never know what this actually cost the local population. The world knows that Gaddafi is a bloody tyrant and his regime in the West was considered a source of international terrorism. However, there is another point of view. Several people continue thinking that he was a talented politician and a genius leader who did much for the simple Libyans. But we'll let the historians discuss Colonel Gaddafi's personality. So while the Great Man-Made River was still in Stage 3 back in 2008, it was put into the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest irrigation system. Western media reluctantly shared news on the project, although almost all other projects pale in comparison. How much did making the pipes cost, you ask? Well, each pipe section was 24.6 feet long and required 5 miles of steel cable. The total length was enough to go around the world 230 times. The stone and sand used in making the pipes was enough to build 16 pyramids of Giza. The cement used in the project could have been used to make a highway from Tripoli to Moscow and maybe even to St. Petersburg. Now, objectively, the Libyans were able to create a true miracle of engineering that they can use to irrigate thousands of hectares of land and change the region's appearance. But in 2011, construction stopped because of the Civil War. Naturally, there were no irrigation projects at the time, and the war caused damage to the already built sections. So in recent years, the press has frequently published articles about the lack of drinking water in Libya. Sometimes it is used as a tool in fighting for various political groups, and the common people suffer for it. Unfortunately, due to negligence, the lack of technical service stations, and armed attacks, the infrastructure is being destroyed. The great man-made river is gradually losing its greatness. No one is servicing the river. There's no water in Tripoli, in Benghazi, and definitely not in the desert. Now, according to specialists, if the project had been completed without any obstacles, then North Africa might be a peaceful place. Libya could have started a green revolution with its project. It would have solved many problems with food in Africa, and it would have provided stability and economical independence. Alas, no one knows if or when it will happen. Well, that's all for today. If you liked the video, leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know uh, what you thought was interesting from this video too in the comments. We'll see you next time.